Hey everyone, welcome back to Navigator Nuggets. I'm your host, Dr. Nicole Rochester, board certified pediatrician, health advocate, and CEO of Your GPS Doc. Today, we are going to talk about how to find a good primary care doctor. And these tips apply to any type of doctor. But this happens to be National Primary Care Week. National Primary Care Week is celebrated the first week in October of every year. And so we're going to talk all about it. I know that many of you may be struggling with finding a good doctor. I have had my own challenges with finding a good doctor throughout the years, not only for myself, but for my loved ones. And so this is going to be a great episode. I'm looking forward to sharing these tips with you. So first, let's talk about primary care for just a moment. What is primary care? What is a primary care physician? When we say primary care, we mean just that. That is your first stop or should be in your journey of the healthcare system. Your primary care physician is the person who ideally should see you first when you are having any concerns or worries about your health. But he or she, even more importantly, should be the one person who keeps it all together, who manages all of your chronic health conditions, who keeps up with what's going on when you go see another specialist, who follows through with your laboratory results, your screening tests, and really that's the doctor that maintains your health in the best way possible. Now, in this day and age, I know that many people don't feel like a primary care physician is necessary. Many people feel like, oh, that's just you know a barrier. I hate having to go to my PCP or primary care physician to get a referral. Or they'll say, you know, they won't even fill my prescription until they see me. That's just a waste of my time. I'm fine. But you all, the primary care physician is really like your safety net. They are the person that should know you inside and out. And they are often the person that may find hidden illnesses or hidden diseases that you didn't even know that you had. So let me do a shout out to all the primary care physicians around the country and the world. I myself was a primary care physician, so many of you know that I'm a pediatrician. When I first finished my training back in 2000, I practiced primary care pediatrics. And I did that for almost four years before I transitioned into hospital medicine. So I know firsthand the joys and the pains of being a primary care physician. To go back to the topic, How do you find a good primary care physician? Because when I'm talking to clients and friends and family members, I think that a lot of times the reason that people don't want to go to their PCP is because they don't necessarily like their PCP. So let's talk about it. How do you find a good doctor? Well, let me start out by saying that what I think is a good doctor and what you think is a good doctor may vary right so to start we need to make sure that we're all on the same page type in the comments for me what do you consider the characteristics of a good doctor i'll share with you that when my sisters and i were caring for our dad who is now deceased he had a primary care doctor that he had been seeing i mean you all probably for like 20 years plus we didn't necessarily like this guy so much And it's not that he wasn't a nice person because he absolutely was, but we didn't feel that this particular doctor was providing the care that our dad needed. My dad had a lot of chronic medical conditions and he saw a lot of specialists. And his primary care doctor at the time just didn't necessarily do a great job keeping up with everything. You know, he would send him to different specialists and write the referrals, but we didn't feel like we had one person who really kept it all together, kind of like the captain of the team, so to speak. That's really an important role of a primary care physician. And we didn't feel that our dad's doctor was doing a good job in that area. But guess what? My dad loved this guy. He had been seeing him forever. He had a great relationship. He liked it that he knew the doctor and that the doctor knew him, that he didn't have to you know, go over his story over and over again. And so that gave him comfort. And so no matter what we said about his doctor, no matter how many times I tried to convince him to try someone else, he was not having it. So that's a great example that in this case, while as a physician, 
I felt that this particular doctor wasn't giving my dad the care that he necessarily needed. My dad had different values when it came to what he thought was a good primary care physician. You know, if you talk to five different people and you ask them, what are they looking for in a mate? You'll probably get five different answers. And the same thing applies to good doctors. So before we can talk about how to find a good doctor, you need to understand what that means to you. One of the most important aspects of finding a good doctor is making sure that you understand your own values and your own preferences. As an example, think about the kinds of people with whom you connect the best. Again, this is the doctor that you should ideally have a really good relationship with. This is the person with whom you're going to be talking about your most intimate concerns and problems. And it needs to be someone with whom you can develop a rapport. So maybe there are certain demographics that are important to you. Maybe you're a woman and maybe it's important that you have a female doctor. Maybe you're a man and maybe it's important that you have a male doctor. Maybe you're a member of a particular racial or ethnic minority, and it may be important that your doctor is in that same minority group. Maybe English is not your first language and you want a doctor who can speak to you in your native language. Maybe you want a doctor who's younger. Maybe you prefer a doctor who's older and more seasoned. All of these things are things that you must consider when you are deciding who is a good doctor for you. The most important thing I want you to understand today is that if you are unable to connect with that doctor on a personal level, then that doctor is probably not gonna be a good doctor for you. So if that means that they're a particular age or a particular gender or a particular race, or they speak a particular language, then that is okay because what's most important to me and what should be most important to you is that you have a doctor who you can trust and with whom you can communicate effectively. I wanna talk for a moment about credentials because I know from talking to friends and families and many of my clients, many people rely on the physician's credentials. You all wanna know where did they go to medical school? You know, Where did they go for undergraduate degree? Where did they do their residency? Were they at the top of their class? And I'm not saying that these things aren't important, but guess what? At the end of the day, they're not as important as you think they are. I have personally been around physicians who have trained in the top medical programs in the country, and guess what? I wouldn't send any of my family members to them, not one. Why am I saying that? Because to me, bedside manner is incredibly important. So if that's important to you, I just wanna caution you that where someone went to school doesn't necessarily translate into their bedside manner, their ability to communicate effectively, their warmth and their compassion. These are critical skills in being what I consider a good doctor. So I just wanna caution you about that. There's nothing wrong with seeking a doctor with top-notch credentials, but just know that that may not necessarily be the best physician for you. Another characteristic of a good doctor is their location. Now you may be saying, Dr. Nicole, what in the world? What is the location of the doctor's office have anything to do with it? But guess what? Maybe their office is 45 minutes away from your home or from your job. How likely is it that you are going to see that doctor on a regular basis when you know that it's gonna take you maybe an hour, an hour and a half to get there in traffic? So location actually is important. I recommend that you choose a physician who is either near your job or near your home so that that way there's a convenience factor. These are things that many people don't think about and I'm not saying it's the most important thing. However, you need to consider location when you are thinking about who is a good doctor for you. Another very important consideration in terms of how to find a good doctor is how the office is run. You all, I have fired several doctors over my lifetime because of the office staff. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how well you make me feel, how much rapport we have, 
if your front office staff is some trash, I am not going to continue to come to your office. And this has pained me. And some of you may have had these same experiences. You finally find that doctor that you like and that you connect with. And lo and behold, every time you go there, there is an issue. So I have had doctors where maybe they routinely double and triple book the physician so that every time you go there, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And not only are you waiting, but you're not being told and updated about the delays. Or maybe the front office staff is just rude. These are all things that will impact your experience with that physician. So, you know, some of you may tolerate those things and some of you may feel like, I am willing to deal with an unprofessional office staff because this doctor is the bomb.com. That is totally fine. If that is how you feel, and if you have found a doctor who you feel is an excellent doctor, then by all means, if you can put up with the other shenanigans, do it. Unfortunately, the only way to find out some of these things is to actually have a visit with the doctor. Sometimes it may take two, three, or even four visits before some of these things are uncovered. But don't ever be afraid about switching doctors. Many of you may be with a primary care doctor just out of convenience or out of necessity or out of habit, and you are terribly afraid of switching. And I know that that was the case with my dad. He was comfortable. He didn't want to start all over and form a new relationship. And that's not anything to blow off. That is a valid concern. But if you are not receiving appropriate care, if you are not receiving excellent care, you deserve a good doctor. You deserve a great doctor. So in part two of this episode, I'm going to continue to share some tips about what makes a good doctor. And we're also going to talk about how to go about actually finding that great doctor that you need and that you deserve. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, you all. That's the best way to make sure that you do not miss a single episode of Navigator Nuggets. So go ahead and click that button and subscribe. Also, if this content is helpful to you, I would really appreciate it if you would like this video and maybe share it with one or two people in your life. All right, see you next time.